You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome back to VHS Gems, the podcast in which we sort of delve into those old nostalgia movies that came out during the golden era that was video cassettes and all that fun, you know, 1980s, 1990s. I think we could even go older than that, too. But um, Early 2000s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we could. I mean, we could go later, too. Just, I, maybe we should watch, like, the last VHS, which I couldn't even remember oh, what that is. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Hidalgo? Oh, I think I actually like that movie. I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, this is Jessica, and I'm joined with John. Hello. And today, the gem that we're talking about today is from 1992. It's a movie that I had not heard of before <laughs> but i'm sure john knew it very well um it's called stay tuned with yep yeah with starring john ritter which i actually watched this one with my mom because she happened to just be in the area and she was like what is it let me look at the trailer for it and she's like oh that's john ritter i love him three's company and i'm like okay <laughs> so so we watched it together and she yeah so we i had a great time actually watching this movie with my mom <laughs> Well, I'm glad you did, because this what? movie, upon revisiting, was just a pile of garbage for me. Oh my god, no! I actually loved this movie. Like, I would watch <laughs> it again. Like, part of me is like, I want to watch this with my dad. Like, I want to know what he thinks. <laughs> See, I remember watching this when it first came out. In 92, I would have been 11 years old. That was uh, the perfect time, the perfect place for me to watch this. Mm-hmm. Um, I... I definitely outgrew it. I did not like it quite as much, if at all. I'm going to just go ahead and say, you know what? I don't like this movie anymore. <laughs> I can't. I'm so flabbergasted because I really <laughs> liked it. Like, I thought it was great. And I don't know if maybe it's because I didn't have any of that nostalgia with it. Like, it's like something new to me. And it's not like I didn't see its flaws. Like, it's utterly ridiculous of a plot. Like, it's... But I think it's because it's so ridiculous that I'm like, yeah, no, this is great. Like, this is just hilarious. Like, I... There were characters in it that I utterly despise. Like, I did not like how the teenage daughter was written. But... And it was more because Mm. she's written as, like, the typical teenage daughter. But before we get too, too deep into it, we should probably explain Stay Tuned is a movie that came out in 1992. It's a comedy, and it's sort of like what happens when the devil decides to manipulate people and get them trapped in TV shows from hell. And Yeah. Yes, and John Ritter's character is a guy who, like, kind of sort of feels like a failure, and all he does is watch his TV, and his wife, who is very successful, wants to leave him, and then they end up getting sucked into TV together, and that's how they sort of rekindle their romance, which was very much going to be what was going to happen from the very beginning, but I That's why I didn't like this, because upon revisiting, I'm like, oh, this hits a little too close to home. Oh, <laughs> if, if only we had evil demons that just want to suck us into situations that force us to realize how much we love each other or how much we need to depend on each other. Who knows? Yeah, that, I, I, I think it's more that codependency. Yeah. <laughs> codependency. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to add? Like, I, I was horrible. I totally did not prep that well for this one i have my notes so i can go through the plot but i didn't even look up like the database at all so it's starring john ritter <laughs> who else is in it i know you research like crazy so i can uh, be yeah so pam dauber who plays the wife mm-hmm. um i guess sort of the, there's definitely a lot of meta uh references in this movie being mm. that it's you know them being sucked into television both john ritter and um dauber 
come from a TV background.、Um, yeah, Adopter was the the female lead on Mork and Mindy, and of course John Ritter was from Three's Company, as you mentioned earlier.、Yes. Which、uh, jumping ahead a little bit, they. Absolutely, reference that in the movie. Yeah, I、um, caught it thankfully for my mother because I think Three's Company was one of those old shows that I never quite watched that often when I was a kid. You know, when you watch those like boomerang reruns and stuff, like yeah, my mom was like, "Hey, I mean, Three's Company!" I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> I mean, it was it was definitely seventies TV appropriate, but it was one of the more risque ones because it made a lot of in your window.、Um, you know, you have a single guy living with two women. The landlord, played by Don Knotts, I, I guess, like never actually, it's never spoken, but he just assumes, oh, a single guy living with two really hot women, he must be gay. And, yeah. Uh, so, so it's basically a lot of that kind of、uh, humor.、Um, and of course, yeah, Mork and Mindy, the spinoff show from Happy Days, one of the many spinoff shows,、uh, which was pretty popular in their late seventies, very、mm-hmm. early eighties. And then one thing I just thought was kind of funny is that I don't remember them being involved in a whole lot of things during the '80s. It was kind of like late '70s, then just like a big gap, and then they kind of started getting a resurgence in the in the '90s. Then John Ritter had like this movie,、uh, the Problem Child series, and he started doing TV again until、mm-hmm. he unfortunately passed. While、well, I guess he was doing Eight Simple Rules for Dating yeah, My Daughter. Yeah, I like actually.、That. Did look up that because I was like, I like this guy, John. Or like near the end of the movie, I was like, you know, what? I really like this guy. Like he's adorable, he's hilarious, he's like wholesome in a way. And my mom's like, yeah, too bad he died. And I was like, oh, what? And I ended up Wikipediaing his death. He had like not quite. It's like a different kind of heart attack from what I understood while he was on the set of a show. It was like yeah, some sort of like、I'm- an. Artery collapse, or, a, or like I couldn't pronounce it, kind of thing.、Hmm. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. He also had one of my favorite cameos of all time too. Is he played、uh, JD's dad on Scrubs, the、oh. Zach Braff character? Okay. I, I think he、right. he may have only appeared once, but、uh, yeah, he played it. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, they look similar, actually. Yeah, they do kind of. And so does the actor、is. that they got to play his older brother too, the one who later became,、um, what was his name? Not Thrawn, but you know the guy who played Reverse Flash in the Flash TV show in the first couple of seasons.、Mm-hmm. Doctor Wells, yeah, that guy was there on there also.、Um, but yeah, so this show,、uh, the show, this movie,、uh, essentially presents you the old Faustian、uh, legend where you、mm-hmm. make a deal with the devil,、uh, and then it's a fight for your soul. Yeah. Um, I I guess the the main problem here that I had with the movie is that the tone was kind of all over the place. Something I wouldn't have really paid attention to as a kid, but now it's like this kind of has to feel like it's trying to be a sort of like a Honey I Shrunk the Kids kind of movie,、mm-hmm. where, where you have the adults and the kids both kind of simultaneously doing their own thing, trying to help each other, but. Sometimes this dwells a little bit too into like the hard PG thirteen territory. There's a there's a few jokes here and there where I'm like, that shouldn't be in a movie that has kids like helping the adults. You know, that's you know.、Um, I think that was one of the things that I actually commented on was when it started. It you know it says it's like what it has rating wise, which it was like. Sexual content, or whenever I was like, "Ooh, sexual content!" and it's like PG, and I was like, "That wouldn't fly anymore." <laughs> like, yeah, it was rated PG. Like an instant R, yeah, <laughs> or PG thirteen. Yeah, they, they had,、um, I, they, they say the word "bitch" several times, which I mean, I'm no prude, but this just felt out of place here, you know, especially with、uh, a, an entire sequence done in the、mm-hmm. old,、uh, like, Tex Avery style animation、uh, of like the old Looney Tune days, and.、Oh, yeah. I think John Ritter's mouse character at one point even says something like "I hate this pussy" in reference to like a robot cat. Yeah,、and、I'm like, um, I don't like this, that. <laughs> that. This is hilarious because that didn't bug me at all. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I、um, think I like、yeah. went like, yeah, of course you're gonna say like pussy at this time. Like it's just like yes,、yeah, and I I feel like it's because it definitely was a movie of its time, so it didn't quite bug me as. Much I don't know. I, yeah, I feel like I guess, also、yeah. I feel like also it was really overbalanced by the fact I actually really liked the mom. Like I loved how she was written. Like yeah, she it, was cool. It, 
yeah, she was just she was very strong. Like she was good at her job and powerhouse, and you know she, she went with the punches for everything. And I was like, I just especially like, in the wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And that to me, like I that was my instant I relate to her because that would that would have been what triggered me too. But before we get too far into it, let's let's go I'll, we'll go through the movie sort of step by step, I guess, and see how it goes. So it starts with these this older couple eating popcorn and about to watch T V and they go to check their satellite dish. Or no, not even check their satellite dish. The the devil character i can't even remember his name now i think they call him spike yeah spike there we go spike comes to their door and they both end up like well the husband disappears and the wife sort of screams into the light like an old 80s horror film and then it cuts to the roll credits it was kind of similar to the beginning of Ghostbusters, where it's kind of a cold open. Yes. You're not sure what happens. And then the lady just kind of screams in front of the camera, but you don't see why. You're just like a flash of white light. Yeah. And it's like, and then, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then so the movie proper begins. And so, yeah, you have John Ritter's character who is just kind of like a couch potato. He just likes to veg out in front of his, it looks Mm -hmm. like a 19-inch TV in his little man cave area. Well, they have like a ton of TVs. And the other thing is like I found kind of interesting was the movie is also narrated by the kid. Because that was the first thing I noticed was the kid's like, my father is a couch potato and he watches TV. And the kid's like, but I like, I mean, I don't, not to say I don't like TV. Like, I just want to make TV. And he's cut all these. (laughs) Power yeah, and they, <laughs> they established that he's some kind of a Radio Shack genius, like putting things together, making his own illegal broadcasting. Yeah, which it sounds like he was blackmailing his sister. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, his first broadcast was going to be her making out with one of her boyfriends with tongue, unless she like paid him or I can't, I can't remember what I was like. Or I think he was you. selling selling video of it or something. He was like an entrepreneurial little kid there. Yeah, which, like, the thing I liked was, like, both the parents knew about this because they can hear the broadcast. <laughs> and the, they, the dad was watching Another of them it, were yeah. like, you're making out with boys? No, none of that. Just like, eh, she's a teenager. And she's still I was utterly, like, what are you going to do? Yeah. She dresses like Blossom. She's, you know, got hormones raging. Yeah. And then, like, it's definitely, like, the beginning is definitely a set of foreshadowing i guess like you get introduced to the kid who uses all the power and like cuts out power all the time which comes in later on and then also you get introduced to the rottweiler dog that's going to become a problem later on which one of my tiny i have a tiny little four pound mutt of a terrier dog and when that rottweiler came on he it was like (laughs) he was going to challenge that rottweiler and i'm like what are you going to do hufflepuff like calm down but (laughs) <laughs> that was, he usually doesn't react to dogs so on TV, so that was cute. But yeah, that dog had a good mean face. Yeah, and then you get you understand that the kids are worried that the parents are going to get divorced, and you get that you know she's kind of trying ish, and dad's just a couch potato and just wants to watch his shows and his sports. He's and that's also. Like, not very ambitious, because they, if, if I understood it correctly, because this didn't make sense to me when I was younger either. Yeah. He's like a door-to-door salesman, basically. Yeah, from what I understood, which I I feel like at the time in the early 90s, that was like a thing that was like starting to kind of trend out because of technology. So, and so I kind of got it. But like sometimes like when he makes a mistake and accidentally drops, spills somebody's coffee, I'm like, that wouldn't ruin an interview for me. I don't know if I'm just too nice, but if somebody accidentally spills a coffee, I'm not going to hold it against them. Like accidents happen. It's like, I feel like people just treat him like crap because of the job that he has in a way. And yeah, that like eventually makes you want to do nothing. Like I get it on those days <laughs> at work that I feel like I've been like abused or whatever, or it's been like a long week. All I want to do is sit and watch TV. Like that's it. Like I understand this person, not quite to his extent. Like I, I wouldn't like ignore my children or my wife, but like, I get it. They make it getting there. They make it very clear that 
TV is his only escape from the nightmare that is his life. Yes. Yeah. We do also very importantly get introduced to the fact that he can fence. Because at first I was very Yes. Very confused over why he had a saber, like two sabers on his wall. Because I know people do have that as decor, but it's not a typical decor choice. And then later on you're like, I was captain of the fencing. Oh, okay. Got it now. You can actually fence. Which is also one of the great things about those old movies is all the fencing scenes. I, I love them. I wish I noted what movie he was actually watching though, and I did not pay attention enough. But um, yeah, when they when he was watching real programming. Yeah, and then but yeah, it's just it's so obvious foreshadowing. Like you could predict how the movie is going to go, like how where it's going to get. Like you know, oh, they they're going to get divorced, but she's trying to save it and he's a loser so naturally they're gonna get together in the end oh this rottweiler is gonna come back to cause trouble in the end oh we're gonna have a power issue later on like oh there's gonna be a fencing scene later on like it was just so much this is what's gonna happen within like the first 15 minutes of the movie yeah i don't know what you call the genre but there was definitely a resurgence in the late 80s early 90s of like the mom and dad power couple that go on some kind of adventure Mm -hmm. i mean like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids would be considered one of them. Mom and Dad Saved the World. Uh, I think The Stupids could be considered one of them, even yes. though that one's also like really silly. The Stupids. Um, yeah, I think that one was with um, Roseanne Barr's ex-husband. Um, <sighs> well, that doesn't really, help me at all. <laughs> really, really annoying guy, yeah. Um, all I remember was that it was directed by uh, the Blues Brothers guy. Um, mm mm-hmm father of what's his name max something Um, okay i feel like i probably do know this if i looked at a picture of it but my internet is being so slow right now that i'm too scared to get on the internet right now yeah and i've been drinking a little bit so my memory is not quite what it should be right now it's not very sharp um but that being said um yeah so (laughs) this movie has that appeal to uh, to it and I want to say now, upon rewatching it, the the main gimmick of them jumping between the different programming, and it's also parodies of programming, mm-hmm. is really the only thing I had going for it. So, um, after several attempts by the wife to kind of get him to, you know, shape up, and even the son who was like, "Hey, uh, I think it was telling his sister," he was like, "My friend uh, got his like." whatever like he left his parents alone so they can go on like a little trip together and like rekindle their romance so he Mm -hmm. like staged this whole thing where he was going to be out of the house the sister was going to be out of the house and they were just going to have the like the night to themselves or something yeah and she was all like into it she was like hey guess what the kids aren't here and it was like oh great and something like i can watch the tv louder or something like that yeah (laughs) and so she's had her fill dude (laughs) (laughs) yeah So she's had her fill. She's like, nope, I'm leaving you. And like, he is still not even aware that that's what's happening. He's just watching the, what was it, the basketball game? Yeah, that's um, what I was like. Oh, basketball game? Okay, I guess. And I uh, so, kind of like yeah, she packs her bags. What's his name? The the devil character. Not even the devil. He's just like a, like a demon like, lackey. He's a demon, which I think I wrote it down in my notes. His name is an actual demon. Like, it wasn't like a made up demon. Like, sometimes you get made up demon names but his he his actual was a real mephisto i can't remember if it was it was not mephisto it was really <laughs> close it was like Mif- Mif- mephistocracies or something stockleys oh mephistocles. something like that yeah that's was his name and i was like i looked it up and yeah that was a real demon and i want to say germanic lore but i can't quite remember and seriously my internet is being really weird i'm afraid if i go on the internet right now to verify <laughs> that that's going to cut me off Discord, and this is just... All right. That could be, be the homework for the uh, the Twitter <sighs> followers. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, so, the, the main gist here seems to be that the, the devil character, or the demon character, likes to target these couch potato people um, that are essentially, mm-hmm. um, like, victims of their own, like, lethargy and sloth, I suppose. Yeah, and, which is a huge thing for demons in general. Is they the reason why they're the seven deadly sins is because it's those sins that make demons want to target you. So that yeah. actually made a lot of sense to me from like what demon lore I have read before. So, 
And I like the fact that the way he entices them is with technology by offering them 666 channels. Eh, get it? <laughs> yeah. And a state-of-the-art satellite dish. Now, a quick aside about that. Okay, so I want to have you know that yes. growing up in the 80s, yes. um, knowing somebody that had a satellite dish system like that mm-hmm. was pretty awesome. Oh, yeah? Because they could see so many different things, yes. <laughs> it was like a whole new world. It was like it was like playing Pokemon Red versus Blue uh-huh. and then jumping immediately to like Sapphire Red or something. Like you Ooh. just skipped a whole lot of steps in between. And now the world is so much bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't. It, it was like going from like three channels with the, you know, air antenna to now you have like stuff from all around the world. And I was poor, so I didn't have one of these. But I had relatives that had one of these. Mm -hmm. And those things were legitimately that big. It looked like a hot tub or something. That was my first thought, too. I was like, was it really that huge? Like, that thing is giant. (laughs) Those things were enormous. And if you didn't have one, if you didn't have one of the fancy ones, I should say, because this one was motorized and they definitely had those. Uh If you had one that was just a static dish, then you had to manually go out there with a big, like pipe wrench like loosen the nuts on it and like carefully reposition it while somebody yelled from the inside like right there right there and then you have to (laughs) tighten it because now you get like the newer channels like there were different satellites with different programming obviously and that was just like a whole experience but yep i had friends and a few relatives that um were definitely up on their uh different programming let's put it that way (laughs) that i normally would not have access to (laughs) That is pretty cool. I think one of my biggest issues with the beginning of this was that for a person that watched TV so much to ro- to not recognize Spike as a evil person with his black fedora and black trench coat and red scarf and all that, like, how do you not recognize that like, you're being scammed right now? Like, <laughs> you watch nothing dude, that- but television. Like, you should know this. <laughs> you're you're about to be the victim. And that dude plays nothing but villains. He was the bad guy yeah, in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Mm-hmm. He was the bad guy in Howard the Duck. He was a bad guy, technically, in The Devil's Advocate. And he's also a scumbag in real life. So it's like, hey, you know, this guy played to his strengths. I am so glad, by the way, that you guys watched Howard the Duck for <laughs> Journey into Mystery because now I don't have to have it be a VHS gem. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> that, 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 is, that is not a gem. That is not a gem, no, for sure. Is that is a kidney stone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's one of those uh, things you kind of just have to pass through, but you know you don't want to savor it. Yeah. So I tried to keep up with all of the the like fake hell version of the shows and their titles. So I have in my notes and like cap locks, three men and Rosemary's baby, which was <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was like the first one you saw. And telling, and then, oh, Sadistic Hidden Videos was the next one, which was just a person telling this lady, like, her husband was dead. And then he's like, as she's crying, he's like, look, look at the van, look at the camera behind me. And she's like, oh, Sadistic Hidden Videos. (laughs) You got me. And I was like, oh, my God. Have you ever seen uh, this comedy series on YouTube from like the early, early days of YouTube? I'm talking uh-huh. like this had to have been like 2004, 2005. Yeah. Uh, and it was a dude wearing like a, a gray jumper and an orange like Afro wig. Uh huh. And he'd run up to somebody, kick him in the nuts. And then while the person was recalling in pain, and they were uh-huh. like, why would you do that? What's wrong with you? Like, you know, trying not to throw up. And he would just be like, my friend, my friend, my friend. You've been kicked in the nuts. And the guy would just start laughing. He's like, oh, my God, you got me. And it was like a whole series. Like, yeah, it was like, (laughs) wow. That I I want to believe that those were not staged and that that really happened. (laughs) I'm sure it's staged, but it also just feels like boys being boys. But... (laughs) I don't think yeah, that's ever stopped, though. I'm wondering, maybe I should ask the Gen Zers. It's like, do guys still just randomly hit each other 
in the nuts all um, the time like they used if, to when if, I was in high school. <laughs> if you're ever around myself and Daniel Barroso, the answer is yes. Okay, Daniel Barroso is like a 13-year-old and never grew out of it. I'm sorry, Daniel, I love you, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> So that doesn't really explain a lot. Um, so oh, so then, if, do grown adults do this? No. <laughs> no, yeah, grown adults do not do this. It's just that weird right. face in high school where it's like it seems like every single group of high school boys in every generation has this time where they just hit each other in the nuts. I never understood it. Nobody ever understood it, I don't think, but it's what happened. We don't um, either. It's a compulsion. I want to say we're hardwired. <laughs> okay. Pain is life. Is that what you're trying to teach? <laughs> I think it's some sort of know. tribal, like, uh, like weeding out the weak, kind of. Like, if you can't <laughs> deal with this, then you don't belong in the tribe. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. I get. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> eh, no, nah, I don't know. Because I don't think us girls have anything to do with that. I mean, but or anything. Com- well. Well, you guys just give each other like complexes and like eating. Yeah, disorders. that's true. Like we just, yeah, that's true. We just do that. I don't know. I think I probably would take like abrasive pain over the manipulation. Although this is really just stereotypical gender and stuff. But anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you see those like first few clips, and then that's when his wife decides to leave, and she said she said something that I actually loved was like she had this quote where she's like i want a man who can touch me and not his remote control like oh like dang this poor lady she just wants to be loved you know that's all she wants but then they go they get in a fight or something and they go out to the satellite dish and they get sucked into the yeah she was gonna dish. like destroy it or something i think she went out there with like a Yes. Wrench or something. Yeah, she was trying to destroy it because, yeah, just just because it should have been destroyed. I would have just turned off the power is what I would have done. I wouldn't have tried hitting stuff. I would have just been, like, hitting all the power buttons just for an annoyance and leave in the dark. Like, <laughs> And that's why it reminded me, now that you mention it, it reminded, it reminded me of um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids because the way that it mm-hmm. kind of moves around, like it's searching for a target, is very similar to that laser beam. Yeah. <laughs> it just kind of like points around. I was like, oh, there's something right there. Let's beam it in. So, yeah, they got sucked in mm-hmm. and they end up in a like a like a game show, like a 70s style game show. Yes, you do end up in a game show called You Can't Win. So that's the hell version of a game show. And the fact that there basically is no winning and what you win utterly sucks because the first prize is the napper crapper which is basically a recliner that has a toilet in it and also a fridge but more importantly it has a toilet in it <laughs> so you can you know crap that while that little scene that, that that was actually kind of great it reminded me of UHF another kind of meta movie like this uh-huh but i think a little bit better yeah where they just have something completely stupid but upon second viewing you're kind of like huh yes that actually is kind of convenient <laughs> Um, and then you kind of sort of get the behind the scenes of what Spike is doing and you get introduced to other demons. More importantly, you get introduced to a a young Eugene Levy and his utterly beautiful 90s hairstyle. I literally wrote in my notes, his hair is just everything I've ever dreamed of because it's like standing up. It's like that. I don't even know what that early 90s haircut was where it was curly hair that was just up straight <laughs> it was kind of like a flat top wasn't it yeah like a flat top there you go it was like a kind of a flat top but eugene yeah. levy's version of a flat top and i absolutely love eugene levy and like Shit's creek so and i think other things but that's the one thing that stands out in my mind right now so i was very happy like hey eugene levy awesome there's a i think he was probably the best in I mean, 80s Eugene Levy was like peak Eugene Levy. And um, Mm. I think he came from a Canadian... As a matter of fact, yeah, that was one of the trivia is that he actually starred in like an old Canadian television show called Stay Tuned. Absolutely not related to any of this except for the title. But um, yeah, I remember him being great in some John Candy movie as well. They were like Mm -hmm. 
security officers that um, go on this crazy mission of some sort. Mm. Um, and back when making gay jokes was like totally like okay, you know, they yeah. end up going to a gay bar, and yeah, it was some interesting stuff way back when in the eighties. Prime eighties <laughs> hilarity, just very much of its age. <laughs> Um, oh yeah yeah let's see so they sort of show that the people are in this trap and they have to survive so long in order to redeem themselves yeah 24 hours in order to redeem themselves and if they don't then basically their souls are trapped in hell from what I was understanding Um, yes yeah and which reminded me of I'm I'm recently if you if you listen to our Geeks Watch podcast you'll know that I'm watching all the old Marvel cartoons on Disney Plus right now and there was an episode of Spider Man and his amazing friends in which there was a villain that could zap you into video games in like old arcade oh. games arcade, and there was yeah. yeah and there was one where oh, what's his name like Vash or something like the bully guy and Spider Man was stuck in Pong. And if Pong reached 100 score points, then Vash would just be fizzled out and die. <laughs> like, that's like instantly what it reminded me of. This whole idea was, hey, it's like that Spider-Man episode. Um, and it has pretty much everything on it. And so you do learn and get confirmed that the, to, the couple in the very beginning is also going through this. And the wife just gets smushed by Godzilla. Yeah, almost right away from the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much right away. Like a few hours in, they think they're on vacation. And they get smushed by Godzilla. Um, and just... It's just... Yeah, they, they get through the video... They, not the video game. They get through the show game. The, the game, game show. show. There we go. There we go. The game <laughs> show. Um... I can't remember how the and like it's like which will your prize be and it's always like door one like that's the only option yeah door it one. was only yeah. it was three options but they were all door number one and yeah. so they won and they got to go through the the portal I did like that that little effect of like every portal was just like the TV static yeah which is kind of a relic of the past now because TVs don't do that anymore but yeah so you have all the snow yeah the um, snow on static. the screen. Yeah, and so they go from there to a very 1980s wrestling match. Very 1980s to go against it's it's a pair wrestling pairs match against basically these demonic looking people that sound like the MGM lion, which is technically a tiger. Yeah, roar. They had <laughs> they had like yeah monster roars or something. And, yeah, it, um, I. I meant to look up if it actually was the sound of the MGM line because that's exactly what it sounded like was the same roar like just that that well, tiger it wasn't roar in the trivia. The yeah it wasn't oh. in the trivia I'll tell you that much they um, yeah they were trivia. called Mr. and Mrs. Gorgon were their names Gorgon huh okay I which mean, I think I is another really reference like... to like demons well, Gorgon is um, like Medusa, if I'm remembering correctly. So, I mean, she's kind of oh, yeah, demonic. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, yeah, but they, that's not what they look like. Well, Medusa is a very special Gorgon, but it's it's a yeah, woman yeah. that's snake-like and got snake hair, basically. But, um, yeah, I, I greatly related to this is where I was like, I really like the wife character, the mother character, because as soon as her hair gets pulled, she just rages out, which is exactly what would happen for me. Like, you don't mess with hair. Like, that's just not fair game. Like, you don't know. Like, I, I we she spent a lot of money on her hair. <laughs> like, she, she didn't just pull the hair. She actually ripped hair out. Ripped it out. Yeah. And that would, like, by the way, very, very much hurt. And just, <laughs> like, no, my, my hair, raw. And she goes and she just grabs a mic stand and kicks ass with it. <laughs> now I was I was kind of disappointed jumping ahead a little bit, but this movie was very light on cameos, mm -hmm. uh, given the potential to include you know actual real world people. Yeah. Um, but this this one scene with the wrestling match featured one of the few like what I think was actually intended cameos. Mm -hmm. um, the ring announcer was Captain Lou Albano, who was a wrestler in the eighties, 
but he's probably most well known as being the live action Super Mario from the 1980s cartoon show. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, not the the live action movie. No, that was、uh, Bob Hoskins. But for the the li- the first live action Super Mario was this guy in the old、uh, animated series because it was bookended by live action segments, and then in、huh. between you'd have the the, the regular cartoon.、Um, okay. I think those used to be on Netflix for a while if you ever want to catch those. But you can definitely get the gist of it on Netflix with just like one episode. You see one, you've seen them all. Trust me on that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. I completely forgot about that live-action Mario movie till just now, and I highly regret remembering it just now because yeah, again, another kidney stone of the past. Yeah, but it's weird because that's another one that I I know I watched multiple times, so I know I had to like it a little bit, and I think the only reason why I liked it was because it had Daisy in it, and I absolutely love Daisy. <laughs> so. And not Peach. Oh, yeah, she cares about、cool. Peach. Daisy is the best.、Uh, Sam- Samantha Mathis, I believe, was her name. You can also see her in American Psycho as、uh, the woman that Christian Bale is cheating on his girlfriend with. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Just a little r- r- random trivia.、Right. I don't know. I don't even know if I actually put the live action Mario into our gems. Not all of them can be shiny and sparkly gems, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them require more polish. That's true. <laughs> so we get after WrestleMania. We kind of sort of cut to the kid coming home, which I absolutely loved his like lime green bike, and I wanted to steal it for myself. And I wrote down in my notes that he said "totally wicked," which I was like, "That's from something, isn't it? Totally wicked, isn't that from something?" And it's just now that I realize it's from Incredibles, and that's、yeah. what the kid. <laughs> Says when he learns that his neighbors have superpowers, totally wicked. But <laughs> but he starts watching TV, and that he sees a commercial for the next show that we're going to be in, which is Northern Overexposure, which is described as being <laughs> a doctor comes to Alaska, complains about everything, and freezes to death. <laughs> that was the commercial, and sure no, enough, that was based on a real television show. Really? Well, I mean, they're all、yes. kind of based off of real television shows.、So. Yeah, I mean, this this one was basically just a pun on it, but yeah, the actual show was called Northern Exposure. Uh huh. And、um, yeah, it was essentially that, like a big city doctor. Think of it like Doc Hollywood, but instead he goes to Alaska. And, okay.、Um, yeah. So, but in this one, all they focus on is just they just needed like a cold environment, apparently. For、yeah. this next few gags to take place, they're being hunted、yes. by wolves and all that. <laughs>、yes. And Eugene Levy, which we kind of skipped over it, but Eugene、oh, yeah. Levy made some comments in the boardroom prior to all of this happening. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And Spike did not like it.、Um, mm-hmm. So Spike, ba- and one of the things I liked about Spike is that he has like one of the coolest remote control holders. Where it'll like pop it out of his sleeve, it'll spin a few times, and then he'll catch it in his hand. Yeah, completely impractical because that means he has to have some kind of apparatus in his forearm the whole time. Probably not comfortable. It's got to have、not. a little bit of bulk to it. But it well, looks like、cool. Assassin's Creed <laughs> Hidden Blade, but it's a remote. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. There you go. It's it's the Assassin's Creed.、Uh, what do they call that thing? It's got a name. I can't remember.、Um, Hidden Blade. But yeah, so he. I guess punishes Eugene Levy by blasting him and sending him into the programming, also, and yeah, that's where they run into him. Yeah, and it doesn't do anything to him because he straight up says, "Like I'm already dead." Like, <laughs> I feel like this is basically like a, just an annoying vacation to him. Like, <laughs> well, like, it's. Is it I suppose it's a minor inconvenience because he can get mauled and lose body parts, but he can、that、still like he's still alive. Yeah. And so, sure enough, they get surrounded by wolves because that's what happens in Alaska. And which I went, oh, wolves! I love them; they're my favorite. But、um, and then they get stuck in a hut with Eugene Levy, and Eugene basically explains, like, yeah, you're stuck in this. You need to last 24 hours. Like, just don't die, and just keep on trying to change the channel. And he kind of shows them how to do that in a way, like how to find the static areas so they can do that.、Um, And the teen, like at this time, the teenager realizes that her parents are gone, and so she decides, "I'm naturally going to invite all my girlfriends over and have a party." 
yay. So that's happening. Meanwhile, her brother is still watching the television. Nothing's really surprising there. Teenager is going to be a teenager and kid <laughs> going to watch TV. There you go. Um, so they're still stuck in the thing. Eugene Levy kind of sort of sacrifices himself in a way. Basically, that's where you get like, I'm dead. Nothing's going to happen. Like, she's alive. Save yourselves kind of thing. Then he goes and gets the wolves away temporarily. And they eventually figure out how to get to the next show by actually lifting the little hut thing and finding the hole in the snow. Which yeah. Kind of Which I was like, why didn't they move the whole hut to begin with? I, like, it's kind of sort of one of those things like you don't think that you can move a house. <laughs> Yeah, and then you're like, wait, this is basically a TV it. set, though. And then also, because my thing was like, that whole thing should be on fire by now. Like, that wood's not fireproof. Like, that yeah, wood no. would go up way, way too quickly. And that, where's the smoke? There should be smoke. You guys should be passed out already. Like, this was way not realistic. I'm sorry. And my third thing was, wolves don't <laughs> like fire. They wouldn't go near it. <laughs> no, but these were these were demonic wolves. They were demonic. I mean, they were very cute demonic wolves. They didn't have red eyes or anything. I don't know. Um, they're just they had, they're very good. They very look good evil. wolf actors. <laughs> I love them. Um, in between the time, you get I think a few commercials as the kids watching, and I wrote thirty something to life, which I didn't quite understand the reference on that one. There the was silent- a TV show called Thirty Something that was essentially just a drama of people in a small town in their thirties. I guess. Okay. All right. So this was where they're basically drama of people in a jail. I guess. Yeah, because they're all like talking about their feelings and having like these little like somebody's crocheting or something. Yeah, and, and whether or not it matches the I have no idea. I'm yeah, like, what is this? They're calling they're talking about the, the, the color of the walls or whatever. And then you see a police guard or like yeah, security guard and he closes the cell door. Yeah. And it, some of them when they're actually kind of demonic, it's funny. When it's just a bad pun. It's like, okay, what does this have to do with the overall theme of, like, things are being evil? Like, this is stupid. <laughs> yeah. You also got the Silencer of the Lambs commercial, which... Again, that that looks like something that would have been more at home in UHF, but that was kind of funny. Yeah, it, it was kind of funny, mainly because I like Silence of the Lambs, and I got, like, hey, that's Hannibal Lecter's little mask thing. Like, that's kind of hilarious, and, it's, it's and then it was to something. Meet the Mansons and oh we totally skipped over so when the kid sees the satellite dish he almost gets sucked in and his bike gets sucked into the tv and when he's watching these commercials he realizes he sees his bike in the tv and he's also recognizes hey his parents are gone this is weird (laughs) kind of thing so he's starting to put two and two together um and then that's when we start the, the 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 parents end up in the uh Mouse Looney Tunes ish cartoon. Yes, which to me this was by far the most perfect of all of the like meta ness of it just felt so much like I was watching Tom and Jerry. Like the music was perfect, the just everything the animation was perfect, the general hilarity of it was perfect. Like it was just like this was genius. And I wonder who did you notice in trivia if it says actually who animated that? Like, if uh, it yes. was a Looney Tune animator? It was, as a matter of fact. Uh, All right. As a matter of fact, it was... Uh, let me take a quick look here, because there's a lot of people involved. Um, yeah, it was one of the big dudes from back in the day. Uh, by the name of... I said his name earlier, too. Now I can't remember it. Oh. Um he was thankfully there's not a lot of trivia to go through in this thing so it could be easy to find Uh uh-huh and i think my computer got infected with your slow internet because it's also taking its time oh no uh let's see here yeah bad recording According, (laughs) according to this tim burton was uh slated to direct the movie but he turned it down to do batman returns uh chuck jones that's who it was he was oh, okay. famous for doing a lot of those Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry's yeah. Uh, cartoons. Yeah. Just 
just a perfect feel. And so the first that I like that their first thought was like, good, like nothing can happen to us because it's a cartoon. No, nobody dies in a cartoon. And then it's highly implied. Oh, no, this this cat can kill you. This robotic cat creature can kill you. And you get a lot of those good punny lines that you get in cartoons like he's eating donuts and he almost gets eaten by a cat so he says like my doctor was right donuts will be the death of me like just yeah a bunch of you know it's just so perfect Um, yeah the the kids don't try this at home when they're about to push like a hair dryer into the bathtub water to kill the cat yeah don't try that was dark like just that was very dark but the I mean, though, have you, like, how long has it been since you watched Tom and Jerry? Because there's some dark death oh, yeah, scenes no, on Tom absolutely. and Jerry and Acme and all there's, that, like. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there's actually, so one of the YouTube channels I like to watch uh, called uh, Nostalgia Critic, um, mm-hmm. one of the things he likes to do is go back and review old dark cartoons. And one time he did specifically mention uh, several Tom and Jerry episodes, one where they want to commit suicide because they're just really depressed um, mm-hmm. and obviously very drunk because there's a lot of those bottles uh, that had the three X's on them. That's how they yep. noted this was alcoholic. Um, mm-hmm. And there was one episode of Tom and Jerry where you're in heaven mm-hmm. and you see like a burlap sack just kind of like tumble its way up to the pearly gates and the guy that's doing like i guess it's saint peter technically um Uh he's like looking down like what's going on and the bag opens and like a bunch of little kittens just spill out and the person is like well that's that's a shame or something like that i was like Like, i didn't understand that until i was like oh yeah that's horrible dead dead kitties dead kitties in a sack somebody Killed a burlap sack full of kittens. That's terrible. Yep. Um, they get out of the cartoon by mailing the Acme Company for a dog version of the cat. Yeah, that was pretty. Although good. his like yeah, his wife gets out first. His wife does get out first, and it takes like him like I don't know another five minutes to mail Acme and to get his way out of it, and then you get. Dwayne's world underworld there we go that's what it is Dwayne's underworld in reference to Wayne's world so. yeah and this when the, when the trailer first came out for this movie way back in the day this was one of those scenes that really sold it to me because I mm-hmm. loved Dwayne's world I was a big fan of it I liked Saturday Night Live I was yeah. like oh man this looks like it's going to be so much fun it's like a you know Wayne's world parody section oh, like, he must this movie's have been gonna be great. so disappointed because it was like four minutes like not even that long and they were zombies and they did do the showing part but <laughs> they 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 copy a lot of the tropes of wayne's world but it just didn't come off funny it's really weird like that that's this was the point when, when re-watching it yeah. that it really started to hit me that i was like yeah this wasn't as funny as i remembered it for some reason it's definitely not and see, and and this was where I was like, ah, oh, it's Wayne's World, swing, like, <laughs> swing, like, like I remember that. Yeah, but this was also the point where I was like, oh, they really didn't get um, Michael Myers to be in it, or that. Yeah, I was like, oh, like that would have been a good cameo, like a zombified version. It wasn't them, right? Because it didn't look like them or sound like them. It it, it was not that. Okay, now. good. I was like, did I not catch it? <laughs> okay, and he eventually escapes. Dwayne's Underworld and I want to say at this time too the kids were like he the the boy was trying to convince his sister that the parents were in the cartoon and in the TV and she's just like ignoring him because peer pressure and her friends are here basically and all that and then when he goes back to the television you are now in basically Maltese Falcon one of those old noir detective shows yeah. yes which which is kind of funny because he starts playing around with the idea that he has that internal monologue uh-huh the kind of like out loud yeah um, <laughs> and um this is where we find out also that yeah the they the daughter finally gives in and it was like oh wait that's our parents in this thing yeah once she sees her mom 
she's just like, wait, that's that's mom. And then, of course, the dog comes up. And the, that's when she was like, oh, okay, this is legit. Which he also, to be fair, the brother also chased her friends away by spraying them with water so that they wouldn't get sucked into the satellite dish, too. So he saved their lives. And they are not grateful. But... <laughs> And that's, yeah, that's finally when he gets his sister to actually look at the television to find out, yeah, that is our parents stuck in the TV. You also get a few more commercials, one for The Exorcisist, which was The Exorcist (laughs) as an exercise routine in which you make it burn, feel the burn, and you set yourself on fire, basically, and then you make your head spin in 360s. And you barf. And then the one that like went right over me, my head was the Yogi beer commercial where it's like, (laughs) it doesn't have alcohol in it, but it will make you act like your father. And it's like this kid drinking this can of Yogi beer. And he's like, get me another toots to his wife, to his mom. (laughs) They're like, ew. Yeah. (laughs) He's wearing like a wife beater. Wearing a wife beater. (laughs) She's like that, like, 1970s, 60s wife with the apron and everything in the kitchen. You're like, oh, this is... Now, this one confused me, too, because I'm like, other than the pun on, like, say, like, Yogi Bear, calling this Yogi Beer... Yeah, it just didn't make there sense. Was, there wasn't really much to it. I was like, okay, yeah. that's... I was like, was I, there I not see where another you're going. beer commercial that you could use? Or, like... Because I know there were non-alcoholic beers... For what I mean, they still sell non-alcoholic beers, but like, what? I mean, I, I it, it it didn't it didn't have like a cartoon character on the can or anything. It was just kind of like a really flat joke, to be honest. Yeah, that one was definitely a flat one. And then you find out in this noir era that the the neighbor, the guy from the beginning who lost his wife to Godzilla, is like a gangster in this noir world. To which you also learn that not only is this guy also stuck in the um, video, but, like, John Ritter's character knows him. They Like, the guy borrowed his mower and everything, which kind of bugged me because in the beginning, you see that John Ritter's character is watching the news and it's about how Seidenbaum's, I think was their name, Murray. Murray was the guy's name, Murray was missing with his wife and i was like you think he would have noted that his neighbors were missing and be like hey i wonder where my neighbors are oh hey you're stuck in the tv but no that was (laughs) well he was too preoccupied with getting the satellite dish and then his wife almost leaving him i guess i guess but yeah he's he's basically like carved out this little hole of the programming as like a mob boss because like the we glossed over it but he's very browbeaten in the beginning Mm -hmm. Like, his wife is very dominating on him. Like, he makes him make, or she makes him make, like, this huge bowl of popcorn. And then He comes, gets comfortable, and says, hey, this needs more butter. So he has to get up and do it again. Yeah. And she just keeps kind of shouting at him and is like, go go get the door. Yeah. And so, like, now he's happy. He's, like, single now. His wife was stomped by Godzilla. (laughs) He's got a little bit of power because he's, like, the owner of this ritzy club. Yeah. Also, he um, has the remote control, too, which is also very important. So he can control... He can show where he's feel, at, basically. Yeah. I don't. I don't feel like they properly established that because, like, why did he get to keep his remote, but yet John Ritter didn't? You know. Well, like, John Ritter didn't hold his remote when he went in. I think that was the difference, from what I understood. From what I was supposed yeah. to understand, I don't know. I, I if, guess <laughs> yeah. we, we I, have to make some leaps of logic here. Yes, uh, just a few leaps of logic. So, basically. While they're talking naturally about the remote and everything, there's a huge gangster shoot off. Murray dies, he gets shot, dies, and they sort of like try to get the remote to get out in a way. Which they do. Yes. But I believe is this where they get no, they don't get separated yet. No, they're still together. Yeah. Um I think immediately after this, don't they end up in um like a French period piece? Yes, it was It was during the time of the French Revolution in which the French were just happily guillotining all of their royalty members. And he is... Like, what was it called? I think it was called Off With His Head because that's what I have written down. 
but yeah, something like basically, that. Basically, like, yeah. Basically, it, he's a marquise. I think was what I was. I feel like that's what they called him. Was a marquise. Yeah, and Marquis he the was Nable, which was in his, hiding. Like, character's name. Yes, he was in hiding, and he was a cross dresser too. So that's how he was hiding. Was he was dressing as a woman? <laughs> and you also get reinduced to Eugene Levy. He survived. He is missing an arm and a leg after his fight with the wolves. But he's basically like, you guys almost got it. Like, you just got to survive. And meanwhile, at this time, the kids are freaking out because they're going to try to figure out how to get their parents out of the TV. And the kid is playing with his Radio Shack room, I guess, and trying to get everything all set up for that. And... Eventually, of course, as he's a marquee in hiding, he gets caught being the marquee after a French shoulder soldier. It's so hilarious when a male soldier just flirts with a cross-dressing man, not knowing that he's a cross-dresser. Like you get that joke in there, kind of thing. Oh, he was—he was—he was a good-looking man. Yeah, he was. I mean, when his what was it? His boobs weren't diagonal because the fruits were <laughs> <laughs> in the wrong. I think sort of thing. Eugene was like, "You're diagonal. Why are your boobs diagonal? You need to fix that." <laughs> like, but um, yeah, you get that joke, and then it's like, "Wait, you're the marquee," and he's like, "I would have given you all the chocolates if you weren't the marquee." <laughs> like, oh, like you still could, dude. Like, <laughs> just. You know, love is love. Yeah, but I mean, what, like, what's stopping you now? You know, I know right? what's changed between like what's two minutes changed? ago and now? I know. Um, there were a few funny quotes that stood out to me as he was being taken to the guillotine, in which he says to the you know the guys with their hoods, he's like, "Hey, fellows, I loved you in Star Wars," which of course I caught because Star Wars was said. Like, hey, it's the sick. <laughs> but why? Don't shake your head. What is, he, <laughs> what is he trying to say by that? Like, they, they look, look like, like Darth Vader's. No, they look like Palpatine. They got the cloaks. That so that is cloaks. a stretch. That is that a stretch is of the time. Stretch. Because what they did look like was the Sis in um, what was it? Not the Last Jedi, but the one after that, Rise of Skywalker. All the Sith people that were chanting. Yeah, the the Sith acolytes. <laughs> there, there you go, acolytes. That's what they were. <laughs> he was ahead of his time then. I'll give I know that. he was. He saw the future with his Hell app, I guess. And then any requests before you die? And he's like, can I listen to the long version of Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> like, just, okay. No, that that also bothered me because is there a radio edit of Stairway to Heaven? I'm pretty sure there is. I was like, that just bothers me on a whole different level because you can't shorten Stairway to Heaven. Like, it is what it is. It's, you can't have like a three minute version of that song. I mean, I'm sure there's like a five minute version that cuts out one of the guitar solos. <laughs> I feel like. I it's, mean, that's probably something we could look up if our internet You was cut working. out one note from Stairway to Heaven and you've disgraced that masterpiece. Honestly, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it here. Stairway to Heaven is not the best Led Zeppelin song, but like, okay. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair. Yeah, like, it's not the best. Like, it's probably like my number 10 Led Zeppelin song. And that's me being nice to it, actually. But. And it's also more like it's always played, so it's ever played. But anyway, before I just go on this tangent, because I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin and all that fun stuff. um, Naturally, just before he's about to get his head chopped by the guillotine, um, his son finds a way to get his voice into the TV in the way that you figure out how to do those things. There you go. Yeah, and he, he takes his sister's radio for parts, I think is what he said. Yeah, and he beamed it at the set. I can't even remember like, how they figured this out. And he, like because he talks and it's because it's a friendship and they're like, God? And the kid's like, yes, I am God. Don't kill the man. Save the marquee. And that's what works. Eugene Levy thinks they did it. They got redemption. And sure enough, they did get redemption. But also, sure enough, because we're dealing with devils and demons, there's always loopholes in contracts. And since technically the contract was only on John Ritter's life, his wife was not included in it. So he gets to leave. His wife has to stay in, basically, because Spike is pissed that he lost because he's a demon. Yeah. And that's what happens. Yeah, there's and a little loophole she, there. Yes. 
she gets sent to a Western world in which the 310 to Yuma is coming and she is stuck on the track, roped to a wagon of dynamite, and is going to get hit <laughs> by a train, basically. Yeah, because you just absolutely have to make sure that she gets blowed up. Yes. And, of course, John Ritter's character decides, I'm going to go back in, I'm going to save my wife, kind of thing, because he has manned up through this whole thing, and now he cares about his wife. There you go, because that's what happens when you're forced to care for each other, I guess. You all of a sudden, oh, no, wait, I probably should go save my wife. And um, he goes in with his remote, I think, this time, or he had a remote, I can't remember, but he has a remote, Spike has a remote, and it becomes the hilarity of jumping rapidly between shows. So the first thing we get is Star Trek, which was pretty funny because he was bald and he reacts to it. And to which that really did look like Star Trek, the next generation actors. Yeah. At least really some did, of them. Actually. Okay. Like, was it, did, was it really them or was it just no. really good lookalikes? No. Okay. So like the best cosplayers but... ever. So it was like the best cosplay. Cause I was like, wait, is that now granted I haven't watched next generation. And like, Actually, no. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing I would say about that scene, which actually makes it funnier, is mm-hmm. that the size of the set is like a small living room as opposed to like the much bigger, yeah. like spread out set. Yeah. So yeah, it just looks like they're all just kind of like smushed into like this really small little space. I thought that was funny. Yeah, and then let's see, they jump again, and it was driving over Miss Daisy. Yeah, there was a couple of commercials in between, though. There was, like, he he got zapped into, like, a, uh, a Crash Test Dummy commercial. Yeah, Because those test were really okay. popular in the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, and then Absolutely briefly in a hockey game, it was a hockey game of Angels versus Devils. And yes. then, yes, he ends up in Driving Miss Daisy. Or yes. Driving Over Miss Daisy. Driving Over Miss Daisy, in which Spike drives over Miss Daisy. And then he ends up in, ta-da, Three's Company. Which... <laughs> <laughs> For something so meta, yes. it really doesn't last that long. They like just because um, and I think all... that's what makes it even more meta is the fact that of course Three's Company is in there and then it's gone. Yeah, it and really it's more like that he's like, like oh, no, get me out of here. Yeah, I don't need to relive this again. Like that's basically what it is. And then, sure enough, you jump into that old, not Victorian, that old. Like a medieval? Classic cinema, medieval fencing movie. And naturally, he's yeah. going to have to fence. In which the kid also, you know, the Spike thinks he wins because he, he doesn't have a sword or whatever. And then the kid uses this as an opportunity to shoot a sword to his father into the satellite. Very bold and daring. He gets the sword to his father and he gets to fence. And that's where you get the, I was the... You know, vice captain of assistant captain, and like half cat, whatever captain of the fencing team, and you're like, oh, you can fence, okay, that's cool. And then in between that, you get for whatever reason a salt and pepper music video, and which they have to, yeah. <laughs> this is the point what? where I completely gave up on the movie. Oh no. Because I, I didn't remember this in this, how long this whole sequence was. This was like a full-length music video. Yes, I would have much preferred the fencing scene to be the last scene <laughs> over the salt and pepper scene to be the last scene. Because I was like, why is this the last one? And they go so overboard with it. I mean, you have John Ritter done up completely like Prince, like early 90s Prince. I mean, that's the only way to do it, though, to be fair. I... <laughs> and... Yeah, this also follows a lot of the same uh, video styles of the early 90s, like the early Janet Jackson, Paula Abdul videos, where they take place in a large, (laughs) empty, yeah, (laughs) this large, (laughs) empty warehouse with everybody just dancing and whatever. Having a grand old Um, time. And and tossing the now only working remote, because the remote was broken in the previous fencing video, I guess. So they're dancing their way to the remote yes and that's, there you go again the the hilarity just didn't transfer over to me like i and think it was intended to 
this was where I was like, hey, salt and pepper. Awesome. It did go on for too long. I can't openly say that. But I was like, hey, MTV. Yeah, that's great. MTV turned like, what, 40 yesterday or something like that? Yeah. This week? Was it 40? Yeah. (laughs) And there was 14 years of music on that channel. Yeah, 14. Yeah, that's, that's about right. Now it's all weird reality shows. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't get it. I remember when MTV played music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so he eventually gets the remote. And this was also where you got the things that I was more expecting to get. Like turning the volume down. Like using the other buttons on the remote. Yeah. Like I was like, where was that? Where's the pause button? Like that's how I was like, use your pause button. <laughs> like... Right? That's like, what I would have written way better. in. Yeah. And he wins. He gets he gets the remote. He gets back to his wife. They're still stuck, though. He doesn't have a way to save her. And they're like, how do you normally get out of the TV when you need to? Turn it off. And they turn off the TV and they, they're out. Yay. Yeah, and, and their marriage is saved. the The satellite dish implodes upon itself like it's poltergeist. And yeah. I guess the demon. moral of the story is that he decides not to waste time anymore, and he starts his own fencing classes. Yes, which I thought was very cute because I also would love to take fencing classes, but we don't have any available in Yuma, so I need this Spike Mephisto whatever dude to come here <laughs> and convince some guy that was the captain of his fencing team. In college to, you know, get stuck in his TV so that he wants to start a fencing school, please. So I can learn fencing. (laughs) They used to have a kendo class here in Yuma a very long time ago. And that was really cool. Yes. I actually think there might be a mace class now. Like medieval mace. Yeah, like the spikes. I I must know. (laughs) I must learn more about this. I know. I feel like I'll have to have to go check. That was like pre COVID though. I'll have to figure out if it's still Oh I know. I I'm sure it's still going. I'm sure You know, I guess. For for the longest time when I felt a little bit more entrepreneurial, I was like, you know what, somebody should really start a Jedi class and somebody just teach kids how to play with yes. lightsabers. And uh-huh. I was like, I should yeah. do that. that I was that, like, No, they're still yeah. very litigious. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it's still well, it's still fencing. I mean, it would be fencing basically, or samurai, or um, oh. no, 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 not samurai. Ken, kendo, kendo, is it kendo? Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, but I, I saw quite recently. Like, can you give me like the nerdy version of, of gym? Like, give me that version where I'm learning how to sword fight, and like some old guy is like kicking my ass to get me to stand back up because he knows that I will stand back up when I get knocked down. <laughs> can you get me that like that's the only way like mace and axe throwing and all that stuff like give me the nerdy version of gym where i'm just oh, learning yeah. how to fight like that's that's what i want i think uh, you're onto something that sound like i want to get up and start flailing around now i know right like don't we all <laughs> give me give me a background story too like it's a role-playing gym <laughs> There you go. You're not yourself. It's, it's okay. You're not yourself. You can exercise. It's not you. It's it's, it's Dungeons your D&D and Dragons character. and calisthenics. I know, right? Although my D and D character absolutely hates exercising, but you know, whatever. <laughs> well, it's because um, of the druidness, you know, that they're more just. Yeah, she is. In- she, yes, she's druid, but she's also, you know, a duchess. So she's like, I don't need to. <laughs> there you go. Um. Yeah. By the way, I miss D and D so much. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna blast it in all of our podcasts. How much I miss D and D. I still don't understand why we don't do it remotely like this. Oh, you don't? Because ever since COVID started, I'm now in four different podcasts <laughs> instead oh, that's of right. just the one I was in. So Your time is the issue. Yeah. We're busy. Yes, as as it is, you eventually get busy. And the quest we were on was a very long, gonna be five years quest with the rate that we were doing it. So. But maybe true, someday, true. maybe we could, maybe we should, we should pitch this and see, hey, hey, when when we say what our tweets are, go ahead and tweet at Geek Elite Media. It's going to be at Geek Elite Media and, and tell Mitch that we need to do live D&D sessions for you guys. There you go. Maybe we can even do them. Yeah, broadcast them over yes. the interwebs. And yes. um, I, I need to find out, am I still the woman? 
I don't know what happened with my character. There's some some stuff happened to me, and I don't remember where it left off. Yes, we were we were on a. Oh my gosh, we're going on a really long tangent right at the end of this. I'm so sorry <laughs> to our audience, but like, yes, there. The last thing that we were we were in an alternate universe in which we were in different bodies, and you became a woman. <laughs> Yeah. And everybody regretted it, um, but and not me, <laughs> <laughs> not you. Yeah, um, yes. Oh, I did. Like the last thing on my notes was that it ended in a very cheesy freeze frame of him doing a weird fencing pose that I don't think was a legit fencing pose. <laughs> and then I don't know if it was meant to be like a tease for a future sequel, but um this one person that was essentially like interning or it was like his first day on the job he like automatically jumped up to like the new director of programming yeah and took over and he's basically says like oh yeah let's see what the fall lineup looks like or something and you start seeing like little teasers Mm -hmm. for like other hellish tv shows um and you had like beverly hills 90666 i love lucifer the golden ghouls murder she likes which i thought was funny yeah. Uh, the Facts of Life Support, The Fresh Prince of Darkness, Unmarried with Children, which isn't really whatever, and David Dukes of Hazard, which I was like, whoa. Like, I'm all about the devil worshiping stuff, but that's a little too real right there. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I thought this was fun. I'm so sad it was not as good the second time around for you. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think that's going to happen. We we remember the past with rose-tinted glasses, yes, and then you see it for all its warts and, you know, faults in in the modern day. I'm very glad you liked it, though. I'm glad we had two very (laughs) different viewing experiences on this one, because this is a good, like, I don't even know if I want to say it's a good kids movie, but it's a good movie to watch while you're still younger. Yeah, yeah. Because there's there's this weird overlap. It's not quite a kids movie, but it's too goofy to be a grown up movie. It's just somewhere in between. For like, it's a good family movie, is what it is. Like it's a good. If you don't mind your kids family. getting a couple of you know I mean, older bitch kids. and <laughs> yeah yeah slightly bitch older kids yeah. yeah yeah slightly older kids or get like more mature kids because I was watching like PG the pg-13 movies before well before i was 13 and i think i even watched a rated r movie earlier you know my parents would just like fast forward through those things that they wouldn't want me to look at like i'm pretty sure i watched die hard before i was even 10 i think i have a very vivid memory of die hard but i I would have to sit through the sex scenes with my parents in the room that was uncomfortable no my parents (laughs) never made me do that in fact, one of our gems that are in that's in our little gem box yet to be released for whenever we need to watch it is like probably a movie I definitely should not have watched or definitely should not have liked when I was a kid, and that was Pink Floyd the Wall. So, but I know Ooh. watching it now that I'm like I don't think I ever when I was a kid watched the whole thing because there's so many scenes that I'm like I don't remember this like God like, <laughs> but it's because my dad would always like just fast forward through everything or tell me to close my eyes or whatever or or more likely he was watching it and I was like always wanting to be near him so like I was gonna watch it too damn it like <laughs> but I mean that's relatively tame though I, it it does have a couple of brief nudity scenes in it but it's oh, not that bad compared to do you remember to... Pink Floyd the Wall really because I literally rewatched this like every other year so yeah no there's some pretty graphic stuff in it oh wait yeah no I remember yeah there's there's just one scene now I remember yes. yeah. <laughs> where I was like watching it later and I was like oh my god what is this <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. I think you. I blocked that one out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll find out eventually down the line. I'll eventually pull yeah, it right. out of our gem box, our magic little gem box. All right. So that was 1992. Stay tuned. What a trip. Just a fun time. A wonderful meta punny <laughs> movie. Comedy. It feels like it's from a, a different time, definitely. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely and it's it's definitely early nineties, like no doubt. <laughs> All right. So if people want to ask you any questions about stay tuned or any of the meta ness in it, um, where can they tweet you at, John? You can find me on Twitter. I am at Magic Bollocks. All right. And you can find me on Twitter as at JM Bailey Writes. Um for this podcast and other podcasts, you can find it on our website, Geekily Media. You can also find us as at Geekily Media 
on Twitter and Instagram, and you can find us on Facebook as facebook.com forward slash Geekly Media. Please, please, please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you are listening to this podcast. I know we're on a lot more things now. We're we're on Spotify, we're on Amazon Music, iTunes, I think. We're on a bunch of stuff. So wherever you're listening, please rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps us out. If you'd like to help us out even more and get some bonus content, be sure to check us out on Patreon. Um, we're Geek Elite Media on Patreon as well. Um, until then, always remember to geek, geek out. out. This concludes our broadcast. 